All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today, we're continuing concepts and principles with simple schedules of reinforcement. Simple schedules of reinforcement are fairly straightforward, especially if you ever worked as a RBT, then you should know these pretty well. And we're going to use these to build into our complex schedules of reinforcement. So it's important that we establish this foundation before moving on to something a little more complicated. And with simple schedules of reinforcement, all we're thinking about is, is our reinforcement schedule fixed or is it variable? And is it based on responses or time? If we can keep those two things in mind, you should never struggle with simple schedules. As always, please subscribe for all of our video updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So schedules of reinforcement determine how and when reinforcement is delivered for behavior. Simple schedules of reinforcement influence how behaviors are maintained and strengthened over time. In other words, a schedule of reinforcement is exactly that. On a schedule, you're going to deliver the consequence of reinforcement, whether that's based on a number of responses or an amount of time. And if those amounts or numbers change, that's all baked into your schedule. So when you're picking a schedule, it's very important that you consider some different factors. You want to consider what your goal, how strong is the skill already, how quickly you might want to achieve that skill. What can the learner tolerate? All these different ideas should go into your schedules of reinforcement, as well as when you start fading your schedule, how quickly you're going to fade it and what are you going to fade it to? Reinforcement schedules impact response rates. We're going to see that different schedules produce distinct patterns of responding, and that's how they're designed. A fixed ratio schedule is going to produce a different type of responding than let's say a variable interval schedule. And that's something you need to be ready for and aware of when choosing the type of schedule you want. Like I said, we want to think in terms of fixed variable and ratio versus interval. So things like an FR1 or maybe a VI two minutes. We need to know what does the V stand for? What does the I stand for? What's the DS stand for? What does the R stand for? If you know that, this becomes very straightforward. So let's begin with a fixed ratio schedule. A fixed ratio schedule delivers reinforcement after a set number of responses. Let's think about a continuous schedule, which is an FR1, where we are in a fixed ratio one response. Every time a response occurs correctly, reinforcement is delivered. That's what that one represents. The F represents fixed, means it's not changing. The R represents a ratio, which just means we're based on responses or number of responses. And one indicates the number of responses. So every single correct response is going to receive reinforcement. Now this produces a high rate of responding with a post reinforcement pause. And the greater the ratio, the longer the pause after reinforcement. So if I'm on an FR2, our responding may look like this with a slight pause, and then back up, maybe a slight pause, back up, slight pause. If I'm on an FR15, now I've gone from having to do two correct responses to 15. So if I get there, I might pause longer, knowing that once I start again, I've gotta get back to 15. So keep in mind that the longer, or the, the, the larger the response effort, the more it takes to re produce reinforcement, keep in mind once that reinforcement is delivered, you might have to handle maybe a pause in responding afterwards. So keep in mind when choosing how many responses you're going to require to receive reinforcement. So for example, a worker earns a bonus for every 10 items assembled. The required amount does not change. How would we write that? Well, does not change, that's gonna be fixed. It's going to be based on a number of responses, 10 items assembled. That's going to be R, our ratio, and then the number 10. That would be an FR10. A variable ratio, <clears throat> excuse me, a variable ratio schedule provides reinforcement after an average number of responses, but the exact number varies. So we're still on a ratio schedule. 
So we're still looking at responses, but now we're taking the average. And this is going to be written as a variable ratio because the number required is going to vary. We're going to take an overall average until we achieve the number. If we're writing a variable ratio three, well, we might reinforce after one, after five responses, after three responses, after two responses, so on and so forth, as long as we're averaging out two, three responses. This produces a high steady rate of responding with minimal pauses. We expect response rates to be very steady. This is known as the slot machine effect. When you're playing a slot machine, you don't know when reinforcement is coming. Therefore, responding happens at a steady rate. Because even when you do get reinforced, let's say right here, well, you don't know when it's going to come again. It could come immediately, right? We could have a situation where we reinforce after one time and then one time again. But then it's going to be up here next time. So you have to continue to respond because you don't have knowledge of when reinforcement is going to be delivered. It's associated with strong resistance to extinction and often considered the strongest schedule of reinforcement. It's harder to put on extinction because the responses are variable. You can't just say, well, I, after two responses, the behavior is on extinction because at one point we were reinforcing after five responses. So you've got to also keep that in mind when thinking about, okay, how am I going to use extinction with a variable ratio schedule, understanding it's going to be more difficult to actually put extinction into play. So slot machines pay out after an unpredictable number of plays. <clears throat> this is known as the slot machine effect. All right, let's move into interval schedules. A fixed interval schedule provides reinforcement after an average number of responses, but <clears throat> A fixed interval schedule provides reinforcement following the first target response after a set amount of time. So now we are into reinforcement schedules based on time. And when we have interval schedules, what we're looking for is that first target response after that time has elapsed. So if we're taking a fixed interval five minute schedule, we're gonna wait for five minutes to elapse. And then whenever that first response occurs, then we'll deliver reinforcement. This doesn't change. The idea of fixed versus variable does not change just because we're using time now. The only difference is it's an interval instead of a ratio schedule. So a fixed interval schedule, this is still not changing. This is going to produce a scalloped response pattern, low responding early in the interval and increased responding as the interval ends, something like this. I don't draw very well, but you get the idea where we've got really slow responding, a little break, and then a big jump in responding, another little break, and another big jump in responding. Because think about it. If I have to wait five minutes for reinforcement, and I know that, why would I respond quickly in the first one or two minutes? And that's just a general idea. No matter how much I respond, because it's not based on responses, no matter how much I respond, I still have to wait five minutes no matter what. So if I know I'm only getting re reinforced after five minutes, there's really no point in me responding in the first one, two, three, and four minutes. Now, obviously, I'm generalizing to an extreme here, but that is the idea behind this scalloped response pattern that produces low responding early and increased responding as the interval ends. So the student checks the clock more frequently as lunchtime approaches. When it's 9 a.m., the student may check the clock three times. But if lunch is at 12, right, as we get closer to that time, we're going to start checking the clock more frequently. It doesn't matter if the student checks the clock 100 times. He's not getting reinforced until a certain amount of time passes. And then a variable interval schedule. So again, just break it down. Variable, we're looking at an average interval amount of time. Provides reinforcement for the first response after an average amount of time, but the exact time varies. So if I have a variable interval three minutes, again, I may reinforce after one minute, two minute, five minute, so on and so forth, as long as we're averaging out to three minutes. 
This produces a moderate steady rate of responding for the same reason a variable ratio schedule does. We don't know when reinforcement's occurring. Maybe one time I get reinforced after 15 seconds. So I'm gonna keep responding, 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 not knowing this time I'm getting after five minutes. And we're keeping this very simple. It's a very simple way to think about simple schedules. Just like the other, just like the variable ratio schedule, this is more resistant to extinction because you don't know when exactly the behavior is going to be on extinction since the reinforcement has been varied so much. And so, for example, you check an email response, check for an email response consistently that arrives at unpredictable times. Let's say you send an email at 9 a.m. You might check at 10, you might check at 11, and then finally at 1 p.m., you get a response. Let's say tomorrow you send one at 9 a.m., and then somebody responds at 10. So this is going to be a variable interval schedule, not based on your re responses, or in this case, how much you're checking it, but only a passage of time. So some key takeaways, fixed ratio schedules produce high response rates with post reinforcement pauses. Variable ratio schedules maintain high steady response rates and are highly resistant to extinction. Fixed interval schedules lead to increased responding as the interval ends, so scalloped. And variable interval schedules create steady but moderate response rates. All right, thanks for watching. Simple schedules are not difficult, especially if you've worked with them before in some capacity as let's say maybe a technician, but we've got to be familiar with them because we're about to get into compound schedules or complex schedules, and those become a little more challenging. And those are just based on our simple schedules. As always, please subscribe, check out behavioranalyststudy.com, share with all your friends, share BCBAs, RBTs, it really helps. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out, work hard, study hard,